What's up everybody? Welcome to part 20 of our intermediate Python series. In this video, we're going to be building on the last video, which we talked about how we could do operator overloading, create our own dunder add method, which would allow us to, let's just use these two, um, you know, self is the object itself, and then other blob would be the second parameter. Um, it'll allow us to basically do this, self plus other blob, and it'll just work. You don't, there's no parentheses here, there's no real typical, um, you know, passing of parameters, it just works. It's amazing, it's incredible. And uh, now that we have that, we need to have some sort of handling to know when to use it. <laughs> so we need to know when two blobs are touching each other. So to do that, <clears throat> I mean, that's not the easiest operation ever, uh, but that's why this has its own tutorial. So from blob.py, we know that every blob object has its own x and y, which is the center of that blob. And then we know how big the blob is with size, and that size is actually the radius, I'm pretty sure, of that blob. So what we could do is we can calculate the distance between two blobs. What's that distance? And then if that distance is less than the radiuses of those two blobs added together, those two blobs must be touching. So that's how we're going to know if they're touching. So to do that, we're going to use, um, we're going to calculate the norm. The norm is a way of calculating distance between two points on a plane. Um, also, you might have heard of like Euclidean distance or something like that. Um, and if you want to know more about this, I do actually have a tutorial specifically on Euclidean distance and using norm. Um, it's for the machine learning series. You don't actually have to follow along that series. You can just straight into Euclidean distance slash norm if you'd like, um, but it's not necessary. We're going to import numpy as np, <clears throat> and then we're going to come on down, and above draw environment, we're going to add a new function. And we're going to say define is touching, and it's going to take two parameters, b1, b2, for blob1 and blob2, and then we're just going to ask if np.linalg for linalgebra, dot norm for the norm, if that of basically, and then we're going to say np.array of uh, b1x, b1y. So these are the locations of that blob. And again, this this is this could be on an infinite dimensional plane. So you have three dimensions, 15 dimensions, or in our case, just simple two dimensions. So it's Euclidean distance, but you could go further if you wanted. If you had 3D blobs, for example, this would still work. Um, Let's see, before I get myself lost, you want to take that, it's the norm, and when you calculate the norm, it'll be that minus um, basically the same thing, only b2. Okay. If that is less than b1.size plus b2.size, <clears throat> and we'll put spaces around our plus because we're good, little pep aiders. If that's the case, uh, you know, we want to return true. Otherwise, we would uh, return false. But in, actually, what we can do is simplify this even further um, and just do this. Right? This will return true or false. Make sure you get rid of the colon at the end, though. Um, but this will just return true or false. Now, most of the time, I'm kind of against one line functions. But this function will allow us to just have this much text rather than this much text on every time we want to compare two blobs. Now, in our case, we're probably only going to call this once anyway. Um, but it makes sense to me. So that's how we know if they're touching. Now we still have to actually iterate through all of our blobs, though, and find out if they're touching. <laughs> right? Ask this question. So now we got to do that. So now we're going to have a new function. And it's going to be uh, define handle collisions, and it's going to take whatever the list of blobs is. And I, this is this pains me, but we're going to do it this way: reds or blues, reds, greens equals blob list. So we're going to unpack them. This is very much a local function that you would not take to anyone else. Um, because we're basically hard coding the order of this list, but we're gonna do that so we don't have to know or pass the values of what color, 
Never mind. Anyway, <laughs> we're just going to do it this way. I'm trying to think if there, there's probably a better way to do this. I'm going to carry on here, but um, there's got to be a better way. Anyway, um, new blob dicts uh, is going to be an empty list because blob lists is <clears throat> basically we're going to write a new blob list. Um, now, and in fact, mm, actually, I think we'll get rid of this. We're not going to use that. Now what we're going to do is for blue ID. I should have prepared much better for this. I'm sorry. Blue blob in blues.copy.items. So why might we be doing this? As soon as you see this, we know that um, blues, for example, blob list is a list of um, these, like uh, this is the blob list, blues, reds, and greens. It's a list of dictionaries. Uh, so we know blues is a dictionary, reds is a dictionary, greens is a dictionary. So when you see this, for something, something, in, something, copy, right? We know what blues is, it's a dictionary. This is key value. So as soon as you see someone say copy.item, there's really only one reason you would ever copy the dictionary as you iterate through it or, or, or a cop make a copy before you iterate through it, and that is you're going to modify it because you never want to modify the thing that you're iterating through, especially because there are going to be times where you'll get away with it most of the time. <laughs> so it's dangerous. Um, so in this case, we're actually going to make a copy rather than going through the real one. And then what we're going to say is for other blobs in blues, reds, greens, what are we going to do? So what we're going to say is for the other blob ID, other blob in other blobs.copy.items, what are we going to do? Well, if blue blob equals other blob, we're going to pass. What's this? Basically, we're asking, is this blob touching itself? <laughs> right? Um, settle down, guys. So basically, we're just saying, are we evaluating the exact blob that we're evaluating? Right? Because we don't, because this will ring true for every blob, every blue blob, as we iterate through a copy of the blue blobs, we're going to have one blob that it, it's going to, it's going to check against itself. And if you check against itself and you passed that it's that blue blob as blob number one and blob number two, this would come back as a true. So we just want to make sure that we don't do that. So we're passing here because otherwise it would always come back true for that one blob. Else, if is touching blue blob other blob, if they're touching, we're just going to say blue blob plus other other blob. Now, we could be done. And if we were done at this point, we could say, um, ooh, nah, I don't know. I keep thinking of way better ways to do this, but I'm going to keep going on. Um, <laughs> um, if, if we were done at this point, we actually wouldn't have needed to copy both of these dictionaries. But we, what's going to happen is, as was seen in the last video, sometimes when these two blobs come together, one blob gets to be worth zero or less in size. And when that happens, that blob should be dead. We need to just remove it from the scenario. Otherwise, we're going to be iterating through it every time. It might actually touch another blob somehow, and all kinds of bugs could, could arise. So what we need to do <clears throat> is we're going to say if um, other blob.size is less than or equal to zero at this point, after we've done that operation, we're going to del other blobs, other blob ID. And then we're going to say if blue blob dot size is less than or equal to zero, del uh, blues blue ID. Perfect. So now, at the end of all of this, we return blues, reds, greens. Beautiful. Now, we'll save that. And basically, all we need to do is come down to draw environment. We're going to still fill that um, green, but we're going to say now, we're going to take this copy 
that blue, reds, and greens. Paste that blue, reds, and greens. We're going to say that's equal now to handle collisions. We pass that blob list that was passed into draw environment. And now draw environment is going to have to output this. So we're just going to do, actually, we'll just copy this line. Um, after the update, return blues, reds, and greens. So now you might must be guessing that we have one more thing we're going to have to do. Coming down here, you've got this, right? Blue blobs, red blobs, green blobs. Those are coming from up here, these original ones. So actually what we need to say now is just this list, paste, equals that. <clears throat> I'm going to run it, and then we'll run through one more time um, what's happening. I just want to make sure I uh, didn't have an error. That was what the goal was. <laughs> Less than or equal to zero. Let's try again. Handle collisions is not defined. Handle collision collisions. Let's try again. Items. Really? Where did I? Where's the other copy? There it is. Items. That's a lot of errors, my my friends. All right, let's. Hopefully, we can see one if we don't. Darn this random. Let's add. Oh, 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 there we go. Okay, so that blue blob just consumed. Actually, that's off the screen. Darn it. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> it happened for me. You guys will have to take my word for it. Actually, not really. Let's just. Rerun this one more time. Let me put these blobs up here. Let's see if we can spot. I'm just looking right now to see if anybody's close. Nobody is close to doing anything. Maybe I'll just have to restart it. Oh, there we go. This blue blob just consumed that green one. You can scroll back if you want to see it. But anyways, that happened. I'm um, hoping to see maybe these two combine or these two maybe. Can you see my? Yes, you can. There we go. Oh, man. <laughs> that red one just ate that blue blob. All right. So um, we think everything's working as intended. At least visually it appears that things are working. Come on, guys. Come into contact. Oh, this one just ate something. So anyway, as you can kind of see, things are, are working. It'd be interesting to see what would happen after you know a few hours or something, how these blobs would be handling each other. Um, probably you would just have a couple like really, really big blobs after a while. Anyway, that's all for now. So... Um, I did say I would run through one more time, so let's go ahead and do that, just in case something was a little confusing. Um, so basically, we start with the blobs that we have that were just basically just generated on random. Then we get into this while true loop. We're passing those blob dictionaries, and they're just being passed to this draw environment. So we pop on up to draw environment, which takes blob list, which it took here. <clears throat> and we know it's going to return something back to these values, and then this loop just keeps going on. So we're, let's go see what, what it returns. So we pass that blob list, great. We take that blob list, we do the same things that we've always been doing, and then now we are newly returning the new values because we are gonna be, it's gonna be a changing state from this point, because before this never changed, it was always these blobs, but now they change. So we take them, and the first thing that we do is we fill white, um, that's bothering me. A lot of times you're gonna actually probably separate. I mean, this is not a game, a Pi game tutorial. <laughs> I need to redo my Pi game tutorial, but a lot of times you're actually gonna separate the drawing of the Pi game stuff from the processing stuff to make Pi game run as fast as possible. So actually, you would not fill the display with white and then run this operation. That would be dumb. So we'll pull that apart and eventually you would probably run this in a separate process or something, but that's for another time. So um, anyway, we pass this, we handle collisions. All that handle collisions does basically is runs through, iterates through all the blobs. Are they touching? If they are, we use our lovely dunder add method to change what needs to be changed, return the new dictionaries, and life is good. So that's what's happening here. So. That's all for now. That's our operator overloading and actually applying that operator overloading to our blob world. Uh, if you have questions, comments, concerns, leave them below. If you have a suggestion, especially for handle collisions, I have a couple ideas that I, I almost applied 
live on video and I, I just thought better of it. Um, but this is almost certain to be improvable. So if someone comes up with a really great way to improve it, awesome. If you come up with a, a simpler way to calculate the is touching, let me know too. That'll be interesting. So anyways, leave that stuff below too. Otherwise, I will see you in another tutorial.